Hello and welcome to today's LOL League of Legends off-season video where we're going to cover the LCK. We've covered LPL, LEC, and LCS. So if you missed those videos, they are on my channel um, within the last week. Um, today we're going over how the teams look going into free agency next week. And tomorrow we'll go over the players that are not on here that are free agents. I do not buy into the rumors and speculation. We're assuming all of that did not occur. Um... And we'll allow the 23rd of November to be like Christmas morning instead of um, being, you know, leaked and all the hype being gone. Um, so, Gen G to start us off. Uh, oh, by the way, um, somebody suggested I should change the way these looked. I attempted that, friend, and it did not, I didn't like it. So I went back to this. So I did give it a chance. Just, it didn't. Time, uh, space allotment just isn't my thing. So, uh, Gen G, after allowing Ruler to walk, this left only Chovy from the starting five last year for Gen G that are still under contract beyond the 22nd of November. So, Gen G have a lot of work to do, or they can run it with a bunch of. Um, uh, challenger players they have already said that they're probably going to run pays so the fact of the matter is pays is going to probably be playing and after that it becomes you know what do they want to do with top jungle and support it's going to be interesting if they want to run they don't have to if they don't want to t1 the first opening right and we know i mean this is kind of a you know the but Zeus, Owner, Guma, and Karia are all under contract. No uh, Challenger players are under contract beyond this year. Photon was, but now Photon is being rumored to go to Vitality, so I took him off of this. Um, Faker is a free agent. Is Faker going to probably re-sign with T1? Yes. It would be one of those things. We see it in pro sports sometimes. Um, that would blow our mind, seeing a player in a different uniform. But, I mean, it's safe to say that Faker will be re-signing with T1. Or, I mean, maybe he retires theoretically, right? Um, if that happens, T1 has some work to do to find a mid laner. Dom Juan Kia. A lot of things happened this morning. I'm going to get more into that in my roundup later today. I'm going to film it right after this video, but upload it later on in the evening my time. So, probably like six to eight hours after this video goes up. Um to separate them for algorithm reasons. But Dom Juan, Nugri, and Birdall were allowed to leave today. So that leaves Thanatos as the only top laner under contract. I thought he actually looked pretty good in spring, if I recall correctly. Either it was going into spring or going into summer. I, I, I do not recall which one it was, but his numbers looked really good. And I remember saying, maybe this guy should be the starter instead of Birdall and Hoya in spring and even over Nugri in um, summer, maybe it wasn't worth it to, to invest in a Nugri. Canyon and Lucid in the jungle, Showmaker, Duck Dom, Kellen, uh, Pole Bay, Rahil, and Bible. So everybody but Nugri is, is coming back. So everybody but the top laner. Um, I think Rahil is really good. I believe he is going to be um, their... I think he's representing Korea in one of the, like, maybe East Asia games or something. So, um, I think he's really good, honestly. And we'll, uh, hopefully he comes through with that in, in that tournament. Um, otherwise, I mean, like I said, just top lane. DRX, this is one of a few teams with nobody under contract from their starting five last year. The world champions are all free agents. Um, you have some... Uh, we have Clear, Sponge, C-Tab, Starlet, Playeta, Pero, and June. All of these players, uh, Challenger players. Juhan is the only player that was on the DRX roster. He was the sub at Worlds. So is he a world champion? Yes. Is he getting a skin? I believe so. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big Juhan fan. I, I, I can't say that enough. So, um... Some people think that DRX don't have the money to re-sign their players, and theoretically that is possible. Um, I do believe that DRX has an opportunity, now that they're defending world champions, to find better sponsors in this window of time. And also make money because they won the championship. So, I mean, I think that that 
can only go so far. You can't say they don't have money because these factors are going to come into play. Unless they're inept as an organization unable to actually capitalize and market their world championship roster to be able to get decent sponsors to keep the world championship roster together. I would think that that's pretty um, that'd be a failure of DRX's business operations if they couldn't pull it off, if they wanted to. Maybe theoretically they don't want to. That's another factor. So if they want to bring them back, they're going to have a lot of work to do. If not, DRX are going to look a lot different next year. Sandbox. Um, three of the starting five are under contract. Dove, Closer, and Cal. I really liked Cal last year as a rookie. Um, him and Vicla, which we'll get into Vicla in a minute. I thought both looked really good as um, as uh, rookies. Croco, free agent, and Prince is a free agent. Prince, a highly sought-after free agent. We'll get in more tomorrow. Um, so right now, Hambach and Ice are the players that we're looking at as possible starters next year for Sandbox. King Kong has had numbers in the past that I thought were okay. Um, you know, as we preview... You know, the LCK after free agency is done and all that in January. We'll be checking back in on it. But um, right now, Sandbox has three of the starting five from last year. <coughs> and Ice did play, excuse me, Ice did play some games for them as well. I wasn't overly impressed. Him and Envy were swapping spots in spring when the team really faltered. KT Rolster, so the teams are kind of all on top of each other now. I started running out of space. Um, KT, outside of... Um, so three of the starting five are coming back under contract. Does that mean they're guaranteed to come back? No, but they are under contract to do so as of the moment. Those include Cuz, Vikla, and Aiming. Um, Life is a free agent, as well as Rascal. Um, if those guys don't come in, you got Perfect and Castle in top lane, and Rebel and Way in bot lane. Noah as well as the backup to Aiming at AD Carry. We know of him. We've seen him before. Um, Vikla, I thought Vikla did very well as a rookie, like I said, um, when I referenced Kale, I thought, I, I really liked Vikla, I thought he was much better than Arya, given the lack of experience, and I was hoping that he could continue that going forward, and they wouldn't move on from him. I would like KT to keep the group together, if they could, I don't think they will be able to hold on to Rascal, but that'll be a discussion for tomorrow. Uh, Kwangdong Freaks, another team without their starting five, so, um... Keen, Alum, Fate, and Teddy are all free agents, as well as Hoyt, Moham, split time with Hoyt. So Moham, I guess, is coming back, is the one under contract from the starting five last year, maybe 0.5 out of five, I guess, because he split time. Um, the Freaks have a lot of work to do. They brought in CV Max, um, you know, mixed opinions on that, not from, I mean, obviously mixed opinions on him his um his track record in terms of just purely um um the talent on the teams he's been on or has been a coach of has, has been strong we think of griffin we think of drx um but at the same time we also know that there's a lot of off the rift and non-game related problems with cv max so that's a whole nother discussion um i'd like to think keen's going to come back but we'll get into that tomorrow as well um, I think it would be really funny if we had a team that had a, a player named Bulldog in mid and Bull at AD Carry. I'm sure that those, um, you know, t trying to go through those team fights and, tr and uh, play by play and, and shout cast them probably was difficult in Challenger. Um, Fred at Breon, so this whole time we haven't had any openings technically. Everybody has had a player under contract at every role except T1 in mid. And now Fred at Breon. Fred at Breon do not have a top laner or a support. Sword, Morgan, and, um, oh my god. Oh my god, who is it? Oh, how did I forget who the, uh, Henna and who? Henna and who? Delight. Delight. All right, it took a second. Fred and Breon are just a team I at. I'm nothing against Fred and Breon. There's rumors that he, they might try and sell their slot. We saw we talked about that yesterday with Takeover. Um, so out of the starting five, technically none are coming back. Um, 
under contract at least right now will they resign them possibly but as of right now they're not under contract gammon played a few games i think maybe even several games for fred Prion last year so who could they start possibly raptor played three games raptor i've heard of before even before last year as a possible decent prospect didn't like what showed up i don't like how fred Brian plays a game i think they have a coaching issue not necessarily a um player issue but umpty is out um, as of right now, Lava's out, as is Henna. Nong Shim Red Force, a team that went all in on a bunch of, um, you know, wish-washy players and formerly better players, and it didn't work out. Um, Kana, not under contract. Dread is not under contract. BDD isn't. Ghost isn't. Effort isn't. Uh, all five of those players are not under contract right now going into next year. Um, so... That leaves a lot of openings on Nongshim. Jay Wu is the 80 carry right now, and Peter and Blessing are supports. Peter has been around a little bit. Um, I've heard of Blessing as well, so I'm not going to say that those guys are, are nobodies. Um, now, Jay Wu, haven't really heard much about them. So, um, three openings for Nongshim Red Force, and a lot of players to go over tomorrow out of them. And then HLE, the complete opposite of Nongshim. So HLE finished last. A lot of young, inexperienced players on that team. Um, and they are uh, fully stocked in terms of a depth chart and lineup is concerned. Um, everybody's under contract. So Dudu, the only person not is on fleek. So they have Dudu, Willer, Karis, Samdi, and um, Vista all under contract. Now, some people think Samdi might be out. But as of right now, he's under contract. So is he out? No. Um, and all of the backups are under contract as well. So um, do HLE run it back and try and let this team grow? I think there is an argument to be made for that. I don't believe it grew much at all from spring to summer. But they also were swapping out a lot of players. Similar to Fred Abreon that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I understand like eventually you had to do it. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me eventually you have to do it because the team is not getting it together but it depends how you look at it if it's a young team that you want to grow and gain experience you're going to have to go through bumps in the road and maybe it's more bumpy than you expect it to be but with an older team you look at kwang dong freaks when they were swapping out supports midway through the split um you have a lot of older players on that team that you know you need to um account for and you know you know, try and try and maximize their, their value at that point in their career. So, you know, that's a thing. So tomorrow's video, like I said, will be going over the players that aren't on this list that are free agents as of November 22nd, according to um, the Wikipedia. Later on today, I will have my roundup where I'm going to go over the Dom Juan Kia news, other various topics that I haven't covered um in the last two days because yesterday i did a rambly video if you missed it it was a long one but it was uh me kind of putting jotting down on a board here the reasons and ways in which league esports could improve in terms of a contract buyout um team formation standpoint um, i thought that it was really interesting i was using some traditional sports background and thoughts in that so if you missed that that was yesterday um down in the description, there are three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there. Discord, join us. We talk about League all the time. They post rumors, do whatever. Um, and YouTube memberships, $3 a month supports the channel. $10 a month also supports the channel. Um, so I can get paid by for doing these videos. I, I really enjoy doing daily League of Legends content. But eventually, push comes to shove. And I know I've been saying this for months. But um, as of right now, I would not be getting paid for next month for this current month, which is whatever you don't owe me shit, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So thank you for watching and I hope you come back for more content.